Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the new in operator in 2020.3. This is a new function that essentially allows you to get around some very long calculations that we used to write using the or function. It doesn't replace the or function, it just adds a little bit of capability. It also allows us to work in a slightly different way with sets. So let's hop into this and I'll show you how it works. Um, just also up front here, this is a pre-release version of Tableau that I'm using and I've noticed a few bugs, especially with this function whilst using it. So we might have to fix some of those as we're building out this function, but otherwise it should work pretty much as uh, the final release is going to work. I'm going to hit super source sales here and open up the default data set inside of Tableau. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just build a very basic chart so we can see what's going on. I'm going to drag cells onto columns and then I'm going to drag category onto rows and subcategory just after that. I could have also hit the plus icon uh, just here inside a category to do the same thing because it's actually a hierarchy. So that's where you get these sort of um, plus icons and minus icons to sort of collapse and expand the hierarchy. Okay, we've pretty much created the chart we needed to create. I'm just going to create a calculated field. And by the way, if you're watching this and you're wondering, oh, I know some of this already, this video is targeted at people who are you know, discovering Tableau for the first time and just want to know what's new. So it's going to be a very, very simple guide. I'm sure there'll be lots of great blog posts showing some of the more advanced features. But okay, let's dive into a calculation we would have written before. So something you would have written before, possibly, if, um, if I just uh, type if and then I hold control and scroll my mouse wheel up and down, it makes this a little bit larger so you can see. So if I type in category um, and equals, uh, let's say furniture, uh, or the category, just do auto completion there, equals, I always type my speech marks first, um, then uh, type the N properly. I could also use the auto complete, but I'm not going to do that. Hello world, because we can be programmers for a few seconds. Uh, else, um, goodbye world. Why not um, to say that? End. And so we make sure we end our calculation appropriately. And I can see here at the bottom that the calculation is valid. Okay, great. This is uh, set up. I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it in operator. So we have a name for the field, hit apply. And then there we have it, the in operator is available to us. I can drop that in and you can see that it's actually working. It would help if I can spell goodbye properly. You're probably screaming at the screen right now. Um, but there we go. We have the operator, it's working. And you can see here that hello world is associated with furniture and technology. I'll drag this up so we can see this change a little bit clearer when we change this calculation. Okay, the next step is to show you how the in operator can make this calculation a lot easier to write. I'm just going to hit double forward slash. A little quick tip, this allows you to essentially comment out a particular line in a calculation. So what I'm doing now is just commenting out the old calculation. Go back up to the top and in here, I'm going to start writing the new function. So to use the in operator on the left hand side, you basically put the thing that you're checking. So category in this particular case, and then I'm going to check to see if any of the expressions I'm about to write are in the category, okay? So I'm checking the left with the right hand side. And because I'm just gonna type in some text here, I'm gonna put a bracket to contain it. In the next step, I'll show you something a little bit different with sets, which would be really, really cool. But let's keep on doing this. Let's just, um, I'm a really lazy um, Tableau calculation author. So I tend to just actually copy and paste uh, things I've already written before. It also guarantees that you're like less likely to make mistakes. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. And I might get a bug here when I hit apply. There we go. This has now gone red. The reason it's gone red is because the data type has changed in the calculation. So if you see here on the left hand side where my mouse is, um, this has changed to true and false. So what I need to do is just remove it and then add it back in. And now you can see I get a true and false uh, in that column. So now this is doing the exact same thing. And just uh, compare these two. This is this is much easier to write, right? It's a lot simpler and it's, um, it's, it's going to make it a lot nicer to maintain really long uh, calculations that have um, the phrase or essentially. You can just go through some of your old calculations, just clean them out with this much, much neater to follow sort of uh, nomenclature as well. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is make this a little bit more dynamic. So to do this, I'm going to create a set. Uh, the category set I'm going to create is going to have the exact same two groups, so furniture and technology. I'm going to go ahead here, 
create a set, and then I'm going to put the office supplies, um, no, actually technology and furniture. Um, I'm gonna call this the category set, hit okay, and now we have our category set. And what the in operator can actually do, if I just copy this line and put it onto a new one, is essentially, I'm just gonna comment that out and put this one in here, is actually check a set to make sure that the thing I'm actually checking for is in my set. How cool is that? So now if I hit apply, you'll see the calculation still works. It's doing the exact same thing. And the cool thing with this is now you can use set actions to dynamically change what's in this set, giving the user the ability to basically build their own list of what you're checking. So how cool is that? Let's just hop into um, uh, another tab. I'm gonna have to build a dashboard very, very quickly here to show you this uh, working. So I'm gonna open another sheet. Apologies for not naming my sheets correctly. First thing I'm gonna do is drag quantity onto size and then drag category onto color. And this builds out this really nice, uh, cool uh, sort of uh, tree map. Um, actually, I don't need to put category on color. I just need to put it on detail for now, okay? And um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just build a simple list. I'm just gonna build a very simple list of um, items. And to do this, I'm just gonna bring the category onto rows. I did the sin there where I dragged the dimension first. Uh, and I'm just gonna show the value of each category in a table, okay? And so what we're gonna do is gonna use this sheet to control our main visualization. So let's go over to our dashboard. I'm just gonna do the classic double click trick to get everything in place. Uh, I'll leave the sheet names up top and this is pretty much uh, everything that we want. Now I'm gonna go back into sheet number two and I'm gonna bring my category set onto color. And the reason I wanna do this is so that we can see what's going on. And the last thing I'll also do is put the label of each category so we can clearly see the selections are actually working. So right now, what this is telling me is that technology and furniture are in my set, hence they're blue, and office supplies is not in my set, okay? So if we go back to our dashboard, you can now see we have the resemblance of a dashboard. I'm gonna have a list uh, selector here, and it's basically going to uh, change the set, and you should see the colors here changing based on my selection. So let's go ahead and actually make that happen. To make that happen, I'm gonna to go to dashboard and I'm gonna hit this option for actions. And so if I hit actions, add an action, add, and I want the action to change the set values. So this is really important that you choose the right action here. The next thing is to choose your source sheet. Where is the action going to be driven from? In this case, it's actually sheet number three. And I want to do this on selection. You can see here that selection is already pre-selected. And the thing I wanna do is assign values to the set. So you can see here, uh, that's already ticked. And when I clear the selection, I'd like it to remove um, all values from the set. So I'd like nothing to be in the set. So it should all turn gray if I clear the selection that I've just made. And the thing I want to change is the category set. This is really important. You must make sure you change the right thing to hit the category set. And I'm gonna say, uh, this action should be called change uh, category set. All right, so here we go. We're pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna hit okay, hit okay. And now we're on the sheet, but nothing's happened. Now, if we make a change to this, let's add office supplies. You'll see that now office supplies goes blue and everything else goes gray because it's changing the set and it's doing that and using the coloring from our previous um, setup. Now, if we go back in here, and you can see the coloring is actually based on uh, our um, is actually based on our set, which is incorrect. What I need to do is actually make sure it's based on our in operator. And now you can see this is doing the exact same thing. So now if I select furniture, you can see it's kind of spreading this out. If I select everything, it all goes orange. But now this is dynamically doing this. And it's a really, really nice sort of addition. And notice when you change this, it's moving whatever selected always to the left. So it's always really clear uh, what's going on. Actually, it's not doing that, but um, I thought it was doing that, but that's just because office supplies is large. But you can see here that it's changing technology and fun furniture. It's kind of an interesting decision there. I wonder why, why it's doing this vertically. If I go to office supplies, it does it uh, horizontally. It's an interesting, interesting habit. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this very brief video. It's a very, very brief uh, sort of showcase of this. I'm actually quite interested to see what people come up with with this because you can do lots of really interesting things like even parameters can go into the left and the right hand side. So it's gonna be a really nice way to 
sort of see what creativity people in the community come up with. So definitely stay tuned into that. If you're reading this video, watching this video, sorry, um, be sure to just go on Google and Google what other people have written about this particular feature, because I'm sure you'll find some great content. That's pretty much the video. It's a slightly longer one than usual, 10 minutes, but uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Be sure to check out some of the other videos in the playlist and also subscribe, like the video, or if you don't like it, dislike, that's also fine. Um, we're happy to get your feedback for that. Thank you very much.